What's up you thrill seekers, outdoor enthusiasts, and YouTube armchair quarterbacks from across the Mountain West, through the plains, and all around the world. We're back for another episode of the Colorado Shred 2020. If you watched episode two, going back to the Talus Tussle and Scree Scuffle out on Vermilion Peak, I did have a contingency plan if things got a little too crazy and that was to go to the Black Canyon. The Black Canyon is a couple miles east of the city of Montrose, Colorado. And if you've never been to Black Canyon of Gunnison National Park, you are missing out. When you stand up here and you look down into this canyon, it is hard to fathom how deep it is. <laughs> National Park. The wind is probably gonna blow up my mic because the mic guard thing is total trash. What's not trash is this 2,000 foot descent into the East Portal. And it is one of the steepest paved roads I think I've ever seen. Use your lower gears to get down because if you don't, you're gonna burn your brakes up uh, going downhill, which is quite the spectacle to see down at the bottom, just that fresh smell of burnt up brakes. So we made it up here to the Crystal Dam, which is obviously the dam for the Crystal Reservoir. And the East Portal kind of separates the Gunnison River into two separate rivers. This top part above the roller dam runs about 500 cubic feet a second. CFS and more water than uh, lower than the dam. So below the roller dam, it's running like 550. Up here, it's probably running nearly a thousand. And that's because of the water diversion. When you get up here, it's a lot more difficult fishing. When they built the road, they dumped all the rock in the sides. So it's really easy to get hung up in there. In general, fish tend to be a lot bigger in this upper section, or at least in my opinion, they are. Below, the fishing's easier and more natural. Right here, I'm standing up on top of the classic run called the Sandbar Run, I think. And it's probably the only run on this side of the river with the road that actually has a really nice natural turn. Uh, where you could get a real chance at catching some big fish. Some of the biggest fish I've ever caught here were out of this run uh, versus down canyon. So it's not easy to get your spot, but that's okay. There's a lot of river left to fish. I think I plan on hitting this particular area towards the end of the day when I still have some sunshine to shine off my beautiful orange scud that I tied myself and it looks terrible, but we can't all be perfect. I think I'm gonna rig up, I'm gonna drive down river below the roller dam and try to fish some of those uh, lower runs. It's been really weird. I've been hit with these 30 mile an hour gusts that have been coming up canyon and they'll go completely still. And then I get hit by a 30 mile gust going down canyon. I finally got rigged up and I'm ready to do some fishing. I moved down to the campground parking area, which is below the roller dam. I don't think my wind situation has improved at all, but the crowded fishing situation has. Also, I want to throw a plug in to my buddy Seth with Loki Gear. This is Loki's shadow shirt. They've been early supporters of the channel by hooking me up with some sweet gear, such as a shadow shirt. It's perfect for fly fishing. I'm a little burnt right now from the, the climb I had a couple days ago. And uh, wearing something like this is a really easy way to compensate for sunblock and stuff while also keeping you warm. And I wish I had it during that climb. The 
think I found a spot to engage in. I saw it flash kind of in the middle of the river over here. And it's blowing both directions, so I can't really work with it. Ooh, got one. Beanie beanie. I can take him. And he took my scud. He's a fighter. Dip my hand before I grab a hold of him and nice little boat. Ooh, he broke me off. But he didn't break me off. Okay, we both won. I'm happy with that. Ooh, these rocks are slick and I have to be really careful taking a splash. Get good drifts. I'm just not catching no fish. Right now I'm in the pause of wind gusts and it's really nice when I get that pause, but it doesn't last long. Here's another run right here that I'm gonna to try to hit up. Uh, so far, it's kind of been tough and I expected that. I think it's gonna be a lot easier fishing above the dam today, but I do wanna hit a couple of these holes because I think I can get a couple of fish out of them. Oh, I'm getting some great drifts, but no indication of a hit. The problem with the East Portal is, is it gives you just enough, just enough to keep you occupied for 30 minutes. And you're like, I'm going to go home. This is a big hole right here on top of this rock. I've seen some massive rainbows hanging out underneath of here. Just never been able to catch one. All right, I got a nice piece of water right here. I'm hoping it's gonna break up the monotony of the, some of these deep runs where nothing is happening, so. And so we're gonna see if we can pick something up real quick right here. That's too much weight for that in the riffle, so I'm gonna go out for those windows. Ooh, got one. Ooh, oh, that was a good one too. Nice flash, big rainbow. Bang! Just kicked my butt. And I was not expecting that. He was in a weird spot too. Talking about blowing the chance. They've been weird. They've been weird hooks. The bubble don't lie. Ooh! That was just moss. This is a pretty sweet knot system that I got tied here. It's pretty sophisticated. Somebody's gonna get cut, and it's gonna be this guy on the end. After working this hole so hard, I finally caught a fish. This little bow, I'm hoping he kind of gets rid of himself here. So I'm getting to my last casts, kind of in this riffle spot. And I'll tell you what, the ratio so far is a hit or an opportunity once every 45 minutes. If I was a betting man, I would say that most of the action is happening in the morning. Like I was saying before, there are two different rivers here. We have the lower one and the upper one so I think that this lower one has been fishing just terribly slow. It's time to go up to the area of the river above the dam and see if I can do a lot better up there. Just as I had predicted, I'm gonna get the sandbar all to myself. I don't know if that's gonna be any better than the lower river or not. There's quite a bit of traffic up there, but I think this is gonna give me a good chance. Um, different conditions in the water with higher flows. This water right here is significantly colder than what was downstream. I had 
a great bat with this football rainbow right here and it doesn't it's not a big fish but he sure does weigh a lot or she I should say um, but my GoPro uh, was working in typical GoPro fashion and totally missed that part of the action just because it wouldn't play record or turn on that's how fishing goes you want the best part the battle scene and then your equipment just totally leaves you in the dust let's take a picture and uh, get this fish back in the water That was a decent rainbow, especially after I lost so many good ones earlier. It was nice to, to get that one. Well, we're getting close to the end here out at the East Portal and the fishing was just super slow today, but that's fly fishing out here. Yesterday's run here at the East Portal was so rough. Slow, that was a tough fishing. And when I went back to edit the video, I was like, this this is just unacceptable. I can't put out a fishing video of how great this place is to fish without spending a little more time filming and also maybe trying to catch something. So I need to give it its due diligence for the video and fish the AM instead of just the PM. Today I've spent way less time goofing around setting up. I mean, it was like 10 minutes, boom, boom, boom. Got everything to go. It's about business. We're out here to catch fish today versus just shooting a YouTube video. It was too busy upstream, so we're gonna go downstream a little bit. Oh, finally caught a fish. Let's yank this guy's butt out of here. Popped him real quick. Look at the color on that brown. That is a nice looking, nice looking brownie. Got, just got hooked up with a decent rainbow. It was slow again. Changed some weights. And just, I mean, more pretty than Oh yeah, we got him hooked up real good. Look at that color. Ooh. I would say that fish ended up being probably about 13, 14 inches, nothing too big, still a quality fish, tons of color, quite a bit of weight to it, so I'm pretty happy with that catch. <laughs> I must have got him late, because it's a total foul hook. Oh, come on, buddy. They just get me wet, that's just, it's just messed up. It's just messed up, I know, I did the foul hook you. I get it, I get it, it won't happen again. Reaching my final casts right here. Some good drifts. I haven't hooked up on anything except the same rock over and over again. Well, I think I've exhausted all my time as a resource at this particular run right here, which is probably worth it because it was the only thing that it was even close to producing today. I'm going to go upstream and I'll probably have to try fishing above the roller dam and that's mostly just because it turned off bad right here. This water is pretty deep and very slow but it is not hard to keep line tension in which is half the battle when you're fly fishing especially when you're nymphing. So anytime you see a Tug, you can set the hook there. Hooked on to a lunker. 
it's just straight up kicking my butt. At least I think it's a lunker. Feels like a football rainbow. story on that guy was I think I hooked him on the scud but I didn't get a good hook on him he fell off and then got wrapped in the line so I couldn't really tell you what he took but that he weighed a lot Thanks for watching this episode of the Outdoor Gold Colorado Shred 2020. If you haven't done so already, consider subscribing and also hit that like button. Leave a comment down there. What do you want to see in the Outdoor Gold Colorado Shred 2020? And what are some of your favorite places to fish? Outdoor Gold, baby!